Um, all right, uh, just a couple of programming notes. Uh, tomorrow, two things that you will be interested in. One is Denise Brown will join us virtually from Kyiv uh, to brief to you, uh, brief you on the peg to the second anniversary of the current phase of this war. Um, we will also have around 12.35, Catherine Colonna, um, who is, as you know, leading the independent review on UNRWA. She'll be meeting the Secretary General and then coming down to speak to you uh, at the stakeout at about 12.30. So we may delay the briefing to one. We will program so you can cover everything. Um, okay. <laughs> Turning to Gaza, our Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Martin Griffiths, uh, said he is appalled that a Médecins Sans Frontières shelter was shelled last night in Gaza, injuring staff and killing members of their family. In a social media post, Mr. Griffiths said humanitarians are putting their lives on the line, and like all civilians, they must be protected. The World Health Organization uh, is telling us today they assisted in the medical assessment of the six people who were injured and who were transferred to a hospital in Rafah, and that's working with our OCHA colleagues and the Palestinian Red Crescent Society. Two of the six people uh, wounded were children with burns. Yesterday, uh, our colleagues at OCHA and the World Health Organization worked with Palestinian Red Crescent ambulances to evacuate 21 injured patients from Nasser Hospital in Khan Yunis to two field hospitals in Rafah. As we told you yesterday, 32 patients in critical conditions had been evacuated from Nassau Hospital on Sunday and Monday. Our humanitarian partners working on water, sanitation, and health issues in Gaza warned yesterday that urgent action is needed to address the public health catastrophe unfolding in the Gaza Strip. Most people have had no access to clean water, with only one of the three water pipelines from Israel still operating and at, l at less than half of its normal capacity. About 83% of groundwater wells are out of service in Gaza, and none of the wastewater treatments are functioning. Despite uh, repeated warnings from ourselves and our partners about the catastrophic impact of contaminated water and poor sanitation, major challenges continue to hamper humanitarian response in Gaza, including import constraints, restrictions on movements, and lack of safety for aid operations. To improve water and health services, we will need the removal of impediments to the entry and distribution of aid in Gaza, including fuel, as well as the free and safe movement of medical and humanitarian personnel. And just a quick update on the uh, question that you always ask me, where is Sigrid Kog? Um, I can tell you that she was in Jerusalem today to follow up on a number of pressing issues related to the situation in Gaza, uh, where she, and she met, obviously, some Israeli off officials in uh, Jerusalem. Turning to Ukraine, the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs tells us that attacks in the Donetsk region yesterday damaged a water filtering station in Kramatorsk city, disrupting the supply of clean water. The city, which had a pre-war population of 220,000 people, is now home to 90,000 people. Uh, the attacks also caused civilian casualties and damage to civilian infrastructure on both sides of the front lines in the Donetsk region. Uh, that's according to what we hear from Ukrainian government uh, and Russian installed authorities on the other side. Uh, on the humanitarian response, aid organizations immediately delivered assistance, including emergency air uh, repair materials to communities on the Ukrainian side of the front lines. Also in the Donetsk region, humanitarian partners provided aid to the frontline town of uh, Kurokov, which has been impacted by 10 years of hostilities. Uh, the aid consisted of 13 tons of medical and hygiene supplies, including for people with disabilities and um, various other material to support civilians whose access to basic services is severely disrupted. Uh, our Deputy Secretary General Mina Mohamed is scheduled to arrive this afternoon in Rio in Brazil to participate in the G20 ministers meeting uh, where they are expected to prioritize discussions around the ongoing geopolitical tensions and the urgency of energy transition, building on social inclusion, eradicating hunger and advancing the sustainable development goals as a whole. 
tomorrow um, on the margins of the G20. Um, the, we are co-hosting a ministerial meeting convened uh, by the United States and Brazil to generate momentum for the multinational security support mission for Haiti uh, that, you, as you will recall, was approved by the Security Council. Uh, Ms. Mohammed will participate in the high-level meeting, which will be held under the theme Rising to the Challenge on Haiti. She will underscore the urgent need to provide security and other support to Haiti to help it deal with a pressing and worsening crisis of violence and instability. She will also stress the importance of predictable and sufficient financial contributions for the multinational uh, support security force. Turning to South Sudan, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, the head of the UN's Peace Operations Department, uh, met today with President Salva Kiir and a number of cabinet ministers. He was accompanied by the Secretary General Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, Hannah Tete. Uh, the discussions focused on the peace process and the country's first elections as a sovereign state. Mr. Lacroix expressed our strong commitment to supporting the country in preparing for democratic process. The need for increased humanitarian support was also raised, particularly due to the impact of the current hostilities in Sudan, which forced over 500,000 people to flee into the northern part of South Sudan. Yesterday, Mr. Lacroix and uh, Madame Tete were in Abye, uh, where they met with leaders, local authorities, civil society representatives, and discussed how they can collectively work to improve the security situation in the area, both, uh, both of them are scheduled to return to Abye tomorrow to continue their engagements there. Um, also on peacekeeping, the head of the UN peacekeeping force in the Central African Republic, uh, Valentin Rugwawabiza, briefed the Security Council uh, this morning. She noted the continued commitment of the Central African authorities to implement the peace process, the peace agreement, which marked its fifth anniversary earlier this month. Uh, speaking to the security situation, she highlighted the ongoing threats posed by explosive ordnance in the country, uh, saying it is uh, critically important that we understand the source and origin of these devices and equally pursue cross-border cooperation to stem the tide of weapons coming into the Central African Republic. Ms. Rugo Abiza also told council members that the mission needs adequate resources to support the restoration and extension of state authority, which is a priority for the peacekeeping mission. The magnitude of the security sector reform and the restoration of state authority needs cannot be supported by the peacekeeping mission alone, she said. She encouraged members, states, and partners to support the efforts of the Central African authorities in this regard. And as you know, yesterday afternoon, Bintu Keita, the head of the peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, briefed council members uh, about the situation, notably in the eastern part of the country. A uh, couple of qu other quick notes. In Costa Rica, our team there, led by resident coordinator Allegra Bayoki, uh, is presenting to partners this week prepared a preparedness and response plan for the people in transit. The plan aims to boost assistance to vulnerable refugees and migrants, addressing various needs, including health, shelter, health, and hygiene, um, while ensuring dignified treatment and upholding their rights. Last year, over half a million people entered Costa Rica from Panama. That's more than double that entered the previous year. The program places special emphasis on women and children, and um, women and children with children constituting nearly one in five people in transit. Last year, the UN team in Costa Rica, working with partners, supported over 84,000 people, providing medical assistance, legal advice on migration, voluntary return, food aid, hygiene kits, and a care and safe space. Uh, we're delighted to announce uh, that our good friend and colleague Maher Nasser, uh, the director of the Outreach Division in the Department of Global Communications, is being named by the Secretary General as Commissioner General um, for the United Nations Participation in Expo 2025 in Osaka in Japan. Um, our participation in the Osaka Kansai Expo will build on the overall Expo theme of designing future society for our lives and showcase the work by the UN system to overcome common challenges, build prosperity, promote equality, the rule of law, protection of the environment, climate action, and the importance of multilateralism and global cooperation, collaboration to achieve the sustainable development uh, goals and what will be agreed at the Pact for the Future. 
the World Expo will run from April 13th to April um, to April 13th from sorry April 13th to third uh, October 13, 2025, and will include a UN pavilion uh, that will reflect the work of 13 UN entities. Um, today is the international. Mother Language Day, exactly. Mother Language Tongue Education uh, supports uh, learning, literacy, and the acquisition of additional languages. But today, unfortunately, 250 million children and young people still do not attend school. 763 million adults do not master basic literacy skills. A little quiz for you. Oh, hold on. Um, this member states is among the world's most densely populated countries on Earth and is the smallest country in the European uh, Union. What did you say? Andorra and Monaco, I hate to break it to you, are not members of the European Union. Uh, it is Malta, and it sits on the Security Council. What? I sure hope so, because otherwise I'm going to have to fire um, uh, David, who is our quizmeister today, and I will get a phone call from various ambassadors. I, let, 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 let's, let's, let's not, let, do not give me a shovel, because I already have a hole. Uh, Edith. Okay. Thank you, Steph. Um, uh, actually, a follow-up on Sigrid Coggin. Yeah in Jerusalem. <laughs> um, one of the big issues is that uh, f food deliveries to northern Gaza have been halted, and yeah. we've now seen an attack on um, MSF uh, facilities. Um, are these going to be issues that she will be raising, and can we get an update? You know, I mean, she is continuing uh, her work to deliver her mandate based on uh, what the Security Council has asked her to do. She, along with uh, Jamie McGoldrick and others, are continuing in their contacts with Israeli officials to push for greater humanitarian access, notably uh, the use of Ashdod ports, of other points of, of entry into Gaza because we're clearly not getting enough aid in as it is. Um, and a second question. Um, today, um, Alexei Navalny's mother filed a lawsuit to uh, try and get his body released so it can be buried. Uh, does the Secretary General have any comment on the fact that his body has not been released following his death last Friday. I mean, as we've been saying all week since, uh, since he died, is that we would want to see his family be able to get the body of Mr. Navalny back as quickly as possible. Uh, I just wanted to ask for an update on one other thing. Uh, the Secretary General <laughs> met um, with all of the Afghan Envoys, we didn't really get a, a full readout. Is there? Well, I, I mean, the the full readout is his comments at the press conference uh, in in Doha. Yeah. Uh, Benno, Emily, Deji, then James, and then Steph. Thank you, Steph. Just to follow up to the one-on-one um, -on -one between Ms. Colonna and the Secretary General tomorrow, is it a meet and greet, or is it part of Colonna's? No, I mean it's the first time they've obviously spoken by phone. Uh, it's the first time since she's now started her work uh, for her to actually sit down with the Secretary General. But is it part of her investigation? Well, I mean, first of all, she will she will speak to you and answer. She's told us she will take take a few uh, questions, but it's only normal that she meet with the uh, with the Secretary General. Uh, I, I'll, I'll come back to you, Amelie Dendaji. Thanks, Steph. Uh, a French uh, Franco-Israeli friendship group uh, just filed um, a complaint uh, to a court in Paris against UNRWA for crimes against humanity and complicity. Any comment on that? I mean, no, no particular comment. The, we, we found out about this case through uh, your question and, and what the information you provided us. Uh, I checked with our UNRWA colleagues. They were not aware of, of, these, uh, of this proceeding. Uh, Deji, then James. ICJ is having a hearing on the uh, Israeli occupation in Palestine. 
Uh, can you remind us what the position is for the Secretariat and Secretary General on this issue? On the occupation? <coughs> well, we've called for the occupation to end. So should, should Israeli, um, Israeli immediately withdraw from the occupied territory? I mean, we've, uh, Deji, there's a court, uh, there, there are proceedings going on in the court. Uh, our, our position uh, has been cleared, I would say, for many, many years. I don't feel the need to go back into it in detail at this point. Uh, James. Um, so first, let's go a bit for more on these budget cuts, mm -hmm. because this be absolutely quick, clear, why is the UN cutting things right we're, now? We're not, it's, it's not so much a budget crisis and the liquidity crisis having to do with when, the, the, when, members, when member states pay. Uh, we all know they have different budget cycles. Uh, they're under, they are, every time member states pay, we, we, uh, we flag it to you. I mean, the, the, but we're not getting as much money in uh, as early as we would like. Uh, so we're just trying to ensure that on the, we, we have enough uh, liquidity to ensure our basic uh, services. That's what one of the things that's being uh, impacted is the is the the heating, thus the scarf, which I'm not wearing as a prop, but I'm wearing because I'm cold. And how much of that is the shortfall from the U.S.? It, it's you know it's not uh, it's not about pointing fingers as one country. Uh, different countries are adopting different. Uh, different payment cycles. And in terms of what you're doing about it, you're wearing a scarf, mm -hmm. it's colder in the building. For some reason, the, the, the entry points to the building seem to be opening later. I'm, I'm not sure you've laid off any security officers, so I don't know how, why, why you need to do that. Um, but is this affecting any of the UN's more essential work? No, it's not. I mean, some of the, some of the entrances, the t some of the operation times of the entrance have been cut to save on overtime. Uh, so where we are able to make uh, to make savings, cash savings, uh, we're doing it with as little possible impact on on the critical work that we do. Right. So those are my follow-ups on the budget. I, just actual question now, and um, first credit to Colin Lynch his story. Um, the Secretary General appealing to UN agencies with regard to Gaza not to take on the responsibilities of UNRWA. Can you confirm that? What I can tell you, and I think what you can confirm with your own eyes, is what the Secretary General has said himself uh, directly, which is that UNRWA uh, is not replaceable, that UNRWA needs to be supported. This is why he has over and over again uh, pushed this in his meetings with, with member states. This is why he has named Catherine Colonna uh, to do this independent review to reassure those donors who have, uh, who may have doubts. Um, that's why he, uh, Mr. Lazzarini t asked OIOS to act uh, swiftly to investigate uh, the allegations against the 12 uh, staff members. It is clear that um, that UNRWA is, is not uh, replaceable in terms of the scope uh, and the staffing that they have. But can you confirm that he's had discussions with the chiefs of ch key UN agencies who work in Gaza to encourage them not to go round UNRWA, right. to take I, on UNRWA's responsibility, to take donations of money that would have gone to UNRWA, for example. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to go into what the Secretary General tells his, his colleagues, but the general message, publicly and privately, is the same. Uh, Pam, then Stefano, then Maggie, Steph, the Friday is uh, the joint, I mean, not joint, uh, so Friday is the General Assembly and Security Council for events for the 10th anniversary of the Ukraine war. What? Ten. Okay, let's please just one. Yeah. No need. <laughs> <laughs> Tenth from 2014. Hey, just, I, I ask, what is the question, ma'am? Uh, the question is... Um, Friday is the 10th anniversary of the 2014 invasion, and there is uh, act, there are activities in the GA and the Security Council. Will, this, will the Secretary General be 
um, contributing, addressing? Yes, the Secretary General will speak to the Secretary Security Council on Friday. Okay, and is there any statement you have right now that about that tenth year? About no, I will. Uh, we will share it. his remarks uh, ahead of time. Stefano. Thank you, Stefano. About freedom of the press, uh, um, does the Secretary General think that the um, case of uh, Julian Assange is a matter of freedom of the press or, uh, or he's a spy and that's why he should be? Look, uh, um, the Secretary General strongly believes in freedom of the press, in journalists being allowed to do their work properly. There is a case going on right now, uh, which I don't want to say anything to, uh, that may have an impact uh, on the case. Um, but I would refer you to, to what uh, various voices in the UN system, notably our human rights colleagues, have said regarding uh, Julian Assange and the, the concern they have over his fate. But just that, if you can. Now, I, I, I don't want to, because I think it's part of it, it's at the heart of the discussions going on. It's, again, we, we've been very clear in the past about expressing our concern about Julian Assange's uh, fate and the way he's been treated, and I will leave it at that for now. Uh, Margaret. So, sorry, a follow-up on the, Ash you mentioned Ashdod port and passing there on Gaza. Um, has anything been delivered through Ashdod at no, all? I mean, there, there are things that, that have been off offloaded at Ashdod, uh, but have not been, as far as I know, have not been able to be uh, taken by uh, by the UN. So that flower shipment that was much I, it, As far as I know, it's still not, it has not, not come moved. through. Okay. Yeah. And then one other on Venezuela. You had 72 hours, I think it was, to close the Human Rights Office. They told you last week. Yeah, I think they're gone. Has it, has yeah. it happened? And yeah. the staff has left? Yeah. Uh, left the country? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. And then, Sineen. <clears throat> uh, Russia continues to back for weapons from other allied uh, regimes, according to Reuters. Since January, Iran has, has provided Russia with about 400 surface-to-surface -surface ballistic missiles capable of striking targets at a distance of between 300 and 700 kilometers. Do you have any comment on that? I think those, uh, those issues are being dealt with the Secretary General's own report to the Security Council and through the Sanctions Committee. Uh, it is very important that all member states fully respect uh, existing Security Council uh, sanctions regime. Sineen. Thank you. Uh, today is the International Mother Language Day. Happy International Mother Language Day. Uh, Merci. And we know a lot of countries ban many languages, uh, mother languages. And I wonder if you have a strong message for those countries who had banned mother I mean, languages. Our, our, our message is that language is at the core of people's identities, right? And people should be allowed to speak the language they want to speak. Okay, uh, Abdel Hamid, then we'll come back to the room. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, today, uh, news say that uh, Israel is opening a road, uh, cutting off the northern part of Gaza from the south. Are you aware of this uh, development? And well, I mean, we're, we're, aware, we're aware of the situation in, in Gaza. I mean, I've seen those particular press reports. We're aware that we're, we do not have the freedom of movement uh, to deliver humanitarian aid to the north. And, and Fadi Saeed Suleiman, his 14-year-old boy, he was shot and killed near Kalkilia in the West Bank. Would there any words can soothe the pain of his family? I had not seen that particular report. Uh, let, me, uh, let me look into it. I had not seen that news. Um, Deji and then Benno. Yes, uh, the official social media account of the United Nations on Chinese social media, Weibo, uh, at Lianhegua, the United Nations, when reporting the Security Council draft resolution voting yesterday, said that it's estimated that on, 20, on 21st of February, uh, Security Council would cast a vote on the draft resolution of the US draft. Um, I just, I'm just, because this caused trouble for me, because that's the official account I from the not, UN. I would hate for anything that we do to cause trouble for you, Dish. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm just wondering where, where I, is I the don't source know. I will of check that? with our, I, because I checked I, I, all, all, all I other languages. Our, that, I will check yeah, with okay, our thank you. colleagues. It's thank not you. our practice to 
uh, predict uh, meetings when they've not been scheduled. Okay. Okay. You're fine, but James clearly wants a question. Um, just follow up to Abdul Hamid's question. You are unable to deliver aid to the north of Gaza currently. We're, well, let me put it this way. We yeah. have been able sporadically yeah. to do it. WFP did it recently. Their truck was shot at. Uh, they have now said, given the security situation, they can no longer do it. It is um, whatever access we have to the north has to be done from the south which makes it extremely difficult because of the situation in the South. It makes it very difficult because we need to go through some very complex um, uh, deconfliction mechanism with the Israeli forces, which currently is not working as it, uh, as it should. And uh, we've been reporting since the beginning of the year the very small percentage of convoys that actually make it uh, to the north. So a very simple question. Does the Secretary General believe that Israel is complying with its obligations under Security Council resolutions 2712 and 2720. I think that will be reported in due time. What we want to see is an end uh, a humanitarian ceasefire. And we want to see greater humanitarian access and the release of the hostages. Ibtisam, yeah. you're sitting so far away, but I, I recognize know. you. Uh, you said their truck, uh, that your truck, the WFO truck was shot at um, while they were delivering. Uh, do you know by whom? Thank you. No, we do not. Uh, Ephraim. Hi, Steph. Thank you. Uh, on the increasing reports from um, about Palestinian women and arbitrary detention uh, in Israeli prisons and their treatment at the hands of uh, Israeli soldiers from arbitrary detention to execution, posting pictures of Palestinian women in degrading positions online, rape, threatening with rape, who at the UN exactly is looking into these reports and um, uh, what kind of reaction is there about these reports in, in this I mean, building? We've seen the, these reports which are extremely disturbing, uh, to say the least. Uh, I know a number of our human rights experts are looking into this. And we do have uh, a special representative for sexual violence in conflict. Thank you all. Uh, I don't think there's Monica today. Uh, we will keep you posted on the schedule for briefings tomorrow.